Hello everyone, this is the third video on the Hoffman's Inventory Retracement Bar. Since the strategy won a lot of competitions in trading, I decided to try one more video and see if we can reach an automated version that works in the sense that it would provide positive returns over a couple of months or maybe a longer period. I'm going to keep this video as short as possible because we have already explained all the details in the two previous videos about this strategy, so it might be easier to understand if you watch the two previous videos first. Before diving into this one, I will also put a link in the description of this video so you can download the Jupyter Notebook file if you are interested in the coding part. In brief, we are going to look for the retracement bar and we are also keeping the 45 degrees or whatever slope uh, we are going to uh, use for the trend definition. So in an uptrend, we're looking for this particular shape for the bars and in a downtrend, we're going for the inverted shape of the retracement bar. However, for this video, we are adding one more condition. We need the bar to be higher than, let's say, two or three previous bars and two or three future bars around it. In other words, when we are in an uptrend, we need the retracement bar to look like a high pivot point. And if we are in a downtrend, it should look like a low pivot point. The reason I thought about this is because I've been looking to the strongest reaction of the sellers trying to invert an uptrend or also the strongest reaction of buyers trying to invert a downtrend. In this case, when the high or the low of these retracement bars are broken by the price, it's more likely that the trend will continue in the same direction. However, putting this into a program or an algorithmic trading strategy is a bit more challenging than simply explaining the concept in few lines. In this example, we have an uptrend and we are identifying this Hoffman retracement bar and it's a high pivot point because it's higher than the three or four previous candles and it's higher also of the uh, coming candles of the future candles at the same time we have a break above the high of this Hoffman's at this level so this candle is closing above this high this means that most probably the up direction of the trend is going to continue for a while so we're going to add all of this into our algorithm in Python and see if it will improve the results that we obtained in the previous videos. So I will not take too much time on these cells because they've been explained in previous videos. Here we are loading the data, Euro, US dollar, one hour charts, time frame, and between 2003 and 2022. In this cell, we are adding the exponential moving average and the ATR that might be needed later on for the stop loss and take profit values when we are back testing our strategy. We're also computing the slope of the moving average, the exponential moving average, because remember in the uh, Hoffman's strategy or the Hoffman's indicator, the trend goes with a certain slope or a certain angle with the horizontal. So this is one of the conditions we've explained in the previous video. And this is where I applied my modifications versus the program that we have published in the previous video on this particular strategy. So we are adding two parameters, the, the total signal back candles left and the total signal back candles right. And this is the number of the candles to be uh, compared with the high or the low of the uh, Hoffman's candle. Remember that we need to compare the Hoffman's candle high, for example, with the two or three candles coming before that particular candle and two or three candles coming on the right or th of this candle. These are the numbers of the candles to be included in the comparison before and after the Hoffman's candle. Then at this point, obviously, we're including our conditions. We need that the slope be lower or higher than the slope limit parameter, 5 to 10 minus 5, and so on. And we need to have a Hoffman's candle. So I'm putting this right here. These are the conditions defining a Hoffman's candle in an uptrend and one in a downtrend in the other condition. So I'm not going through those details. And the difference here in this video is that we need one additional condition just to check if this particular Hoffman's bar is also a pivot point. And this is done here. So if the df.low in a downtrend, remember we're looking for the low pivot point, if the lowest value of this candle, which index is row minus total signal back candles underscore r, and the reason I'm using this particular index and I'm not using the current candles index, is that when we are trading, I'm hoping that we can use this in a live session, for example. So if we are looking for the current candle and it happens to be a Hoffman's bar, I cannot foresee the future candles to be able to test if it's also a pivot point or a pivot bar. So instead, for each candle, I'm going to check past of the candles and see if I have um, Hoffman's bar. And this is where I can check after that bar up to the current candle 
and before this particular Hoffman's bar if this is a pivot point bar. And this is why I'm using this index here. So it's row minus total back candles underscore R, which should be lower or equal than the uh, low of these candles between row minus total signal back candles underscore L left, meaning the furthest a candle in the past up to the current candle dot minimums. So the minimum value for all these candles should be greater or equal than the Hoffman's bar minimum value. It might sound confusing for now, but if you spend some time on it and uh, try to understand the details, hopefully it will get clearer. In the upward direction, if we have an uptrend, we're looking for a pivot high. So this is why we're testing for the highest values instead of the lowest values in the bars. If one of these conditions is true, we're returning one for a downtrend and we're turning two for an uptrend. We're adding those signals into our data frame into a new column called tot signal. I usually like to verify if the algorithm is working by doing a visual inspection. So we can plot our signals on a chart and we can see that we have different signals. These are the purple points. For example, this one is a Hoffman's bar. We can see that the tail is greater than 45% of the total volume of the candle. And at the same time, it's a low pivot point, meaning it's lower than all its neighbors. This one as well, and this candle as well. The purple points are above the candles, which means that we are working in a downtrend signal, while this one, for example, right here, is in an uptrend. The upper wick is 45% or greater than 45% of the total candles volume. In this strategy, we assume if we have a break above this particular value, we're going to have a continuation in an uptrend direction. So anyway, the purpose of this chart is to verify that the algorithm is working properly. Then we added what we have used previously also in the previous videos, the EMA signal, meaning if we have few candles above or below the 20 EMA curve, we can confirm the uptrend or downtrend direction. This is just uh, some kind of a confirmation signal for our trend. The Hoffman's break signal function will detect if we have any break above or below any particular Hoffman's bars. If so, we have two types of signals, return one or return two in an uptrend direction or a downward direction. And this signal will be added into our data frame into a new column called Hoffman break signal. And again, we can visualize this additional signal by plotting the uh, purple points on the charts. Notice that we have a lot of conditions now, so we will not have a good amount of signals. It's very rare. We have a downtrend with a certain slope. Then we have a Hoffman's bar. Look at this one. So we have a very long tail. And then we have a bar, this one, this downward bar that closes below and breaks the lowest value of this particular Hoffman's bar. And this tail happens to be also a pivot point. It's considered like this by the algorithm because if you compare it with the other values of the neighboring candles, it's true that it's the lowest of all of these. And notice what happens after this particular candle where we broke below this value, we have also another candle that goes downward. So we would expect that the trend continues in a more aggressive way towards the um, uh, lowest prices. However, it's not the case in this particular example, but we can see that our algorithm is working properly. We are happy about it. And now we can backtest our strategy. The way we can put the stop loss and take profit values can vary widely independently from the strategies or independently from the um, signals that we are using. So I'm not going through the details. Sometimes we are going to use the ATR values. Sometimes we are simply going to check for the um, highest or lowest values of the previous candles and put our stop loss value there and then take a take profit stop loss ratio to define our take profit. If you want to know more details about these, please check the previous videos. We have been using this over and over in many videos on this channel. So using the ATR to define the stop loss take profits, let's say the stop loss is four times the ATR at some point and the take profit stop loss ratio 1.5. We're back testing using one trade at a time, $10,000 cash as a starting uh, deposit and with a margin one to 50 or um, leverage or one to 50. At this point, we don't have really satisfying results. We have a return of minus 70%. We also have a large drawdown and so on. I'm not saying that the strategy is a bad one or the indicator is bad. Maybe the money management uh, or the stop loss and take profit values were not set properly for this particular indicator. It's simply that automating a good strategy requires more than just writing it into a code. We have to pay attention to some other details that might 
influence the results or the final outcome of the strategy. For example, if we would like to try a different way of setting the stop loss and take profit values, we can check the highest high or the lowest low of few previous candles around the current candle. And in this way, if we test it again with the same conditions, $10,000 cash, one over 50 margin and so on, we can check that we have 7.5% in return. It's not huge, but going from minus 70% up to 7.5% using the same indicator is a huge hint that we should be careful how we choose the um, stop loss and take profit and the money management issues in our strategy. So as you can see, the influence is amazing just because we have a good indicator. It doesn't mean that you will have a winning strategy. And this is the perfect example to show this. We are jumping from minus 70% right here, minus 70% in return over all the same conditions up to 7% just by changing the way we are setting our stop loss and take profit values. So this was it for this video. I just wanted to share these results with you. I was curious about what if we added this additional condition just to make this automated model profitable. And I also wanted to show you that sometimes it doesn't work the way we expect it to be. So we don't always have to uh, have positive results and winning strategies. Deception is part of the game. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.